Hello, my name is Jaime, and this is my partner Diego. And today we're going to present our project three, examining handleless and performance in an AIM trainer. As my partner said, today we will be presenting the result of our experiment on the human benchmark AIM trainer task. The aim of our study was to investigate whether there is a difference in performance on this task between using the right hand versus the left hand. First, we'll define our factor treatments, response, and experimental units. Then, we'll state our hypothesis in plain language and explain the results we expect to see prior to doing the study. Next, we'll describe how we conducted this experiment, including how we used random assignment, how we measured the response var variables, and why that direct control is important. After that, we'll present our analysis and results, including means, standard deviations, and a side-by-side -side side -side box plot of the response of, for each of the two treatment groups. We'll also present our two sample t-tests, including the appropriate statistic hypothesis, test statistic, p-value, and conclusion in the context of our experiment. Finally, we'll reflect on our results and conclude by summarizing the main points of our talk. Definition in terms. Before we begin, let's define some key terms. Our factor is handedness with two treatments, right hand and left hand. Our response, our response va variable is the score achieved on the human benchmark in trainer task, which measures hand-eye coordination and reaction time. Our experimental units are the participants in our study, which includes my partner, my partner, and myself. Hypothesis. In plain language, our null hypothesis is that there is no difference in performance on the aim trainer task between using the right versus the left hand. Our alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference in performance. Prior conducting the study, we expected to see a statistically significant difference in performance between using the right hand versus the left hand, since most people are right-handed and may be more comfortable using their dominant hand. Experiment. To conduct the, our experiment, we each completed 30 trials of the AIM trainer task, with 15 using our right hand and 15 trials using our left hand. We use random assignment to the to determine, determine which hand we used first and made sure to alternate hands for each set of 15 trials. We measure our response variable, the score achieved on the A trainer task using the score displayed on the screen at the end of each trial. We use direct control by completing the trials under the same conditions and at the same the same time of the day to minimize the influence of external factors on our performance. So now that we have explained the setup of our experiment, let's move on to the analysis and results. First, we will present the means, standard de derivations, and a slide by slide box plot of the response for each of the two treatment groups. As you can see on this slide, the mean response time for the right handle group was 660.59985 with a standard derivation of 88.347. While the mean while the uh, while the mean response time for the left handle group was 697.699 with a standard deviation of 979.48415. The, the, the side by slide drop blocks shows that the left handle group had slightly faster response times on average than the right handle group. Based on this information, we expect to see a statistic. A statist Really significant difference in the means when conducting our hypothesis text. However, before we, uh, we could do that, we need to check the assumptions for uh, two sample t-tests. 
we assume that data were normally uh, distributed, distributed and that the variance of the two groups were equal. To access normality, we create dot plots for each treatment group, which you can see on this slide. The dot plots suggest that data are roughly symmetric and unimodal, supporting our assumption of normality. To assess the quality of variance, of variance we use SALT to perform a test of equal value and variance, which gave us a p value, value of 0 0.8. 86, suggesting that we can assume an equal variance. Now we can move on to the hypothesis test. Our null hypothesis was that there is no different difference in the mean response times between the right hand and the left hand groups. While our alternative hypothesis was that there is a difference using a two sample t-test with a 0.5 will obtain a t-statistic of 1.707092 and a p-value of a 0 0.9314, which is less than A. So we reject the new hypothesis and conclude that there is a statistically significant difference in the mean response times between the two groups. Finally we compute that the 90% confidence interval for the, dif for dif the difference in population means between the two groups, which was minus 6.35 for 79 and 80.55 for 789. This means that the 95% confidence that the two, that the two difference it mean, it mean response times between the right hand and the left hand group that falls between Again, minus 6.35, 4789, and 80.55, 47.89. In terms of reflection, our, res our results mostly matched what we expected prior to conducting the study, but we were surprised by the magnitude of difference between the two groups. We also believe that the assumption of no difference between team members was valid, as we took steps to randomize the assignment of treatment and candidates. Overall, our study makes sense given that we know, given what we know about the human brain and the difference in neural processing between left and right hand individuals. However, there are no many aspects of our study that we could be improved upon such as increasing the sample size or using a more sensitive measure of reaction time. In conclusion, our study provides evidence for a significant difference in, bench in mean response times between right and left-handed individuals in the context of the human benchmark aim trainer task. Thank you for your attention and you're welcome to any questions or comments you may have.